Hello and welcome to the Californian Hills. It's the penultimate American round of the season. We've got one more in Daytona, a Saturday night race in a few weeks' time. But for now, it's the last race of the quadruple header of American races. Don't know why I couldn't have said American quadruple header, but... Who knows, we went to... Um, where did we go? We went to Royal America, we went to Virginia, we went to um, Rio, and now we're in Sonoma, the Californian Grand Prix. It's West Coast Racing, it's late on here, where I am, it's 11pm currently for me in UK. So yeah, I'm pretty tired, feeling it, but what a racetrack we are at so far in Sonoma. As we see, Nico Hülkenberg, the German, he got pole two weeks ago in Virginia. The last non-sprint race weekend. As he tackles the tricky undulating circuit, which is the Sonoma Raceway. There's a quite a few layouts to choose from here at Sonoma. All of this is always the same, but we, when we get to here, we were initially meant to go left here, but in, late on we decided to go straight on. It was meant to be go left there and then use the very... No, actually, no, we meant to go straight on and then use the very tight hairpin. But we realised... The F1 realised that was going to be way too tight. So they decided to do the... Um, use the other bit. We've got the chicane. We can all, we could have gone right and used the NASCAR layout. But better overtaking opportunities, to be honest, in the chicane. And then we were meant to use the three hairpin variations here. We were meant to use the second one on the right. We ended up using the third one instead. Just to... Um, Get the race, di uh, race circuit distance up a bit. Anyway, let's go on board with Nika Hülkenberg for a lap of this Sonoma circuit. Actually, let's go driver's eye, I reckon. Here we go. Driver's eye with Nika Hülkenberg. If we go up the hill of turn one and turn two, let's get some cornerings up. Because I probably should have done this before, but I forgot. If I know my luck, if you even have corner names. Um, anyway. Here we go. Nope, doesn't have corner names. Okay. He's going through turn 5 now, and then towards the very long hairpin of turn 6. You can take this flat out if you do want to. It definitely is doable. Well, not flat out, but like you can take a very different line to normal. And as he goes through turn 7, the long right-hander. Before we go through 7-8, and then towards a bit like the snake in Virginia. Through turn 8, and then 8-A, towards 9-A, and then... Um, towards turn 10 and then the final corner no, it's not the corner sorry of turn 11 which is the long hairpin not as long as turn 6 but it still is quite tight quite slow and quite boring I'm not boring but you know what I mean anyway final corner turn 12 flat out and that is a lap of Sonoma Raceway so Hulkenberg goes fastest you know I'm going to give my these some corners turn 1 turn 2 turn 3 and then up towards turn 4 and turn 5. And that's those corners. And then turn 6 is here. And then through turn 7. For the long left-hander of turn 8. Hulkenberg now now in P7. So people are actually going faster than him. And then towards turn 9. And then... Turn 10, and then turn 11, and then through turn 12, 13, 14, 15, and towards 16, 17 chicane. Oh, I goes off the track a bit there, just Hulkenberg, because he goes through turn 18, towards the hairpin of turn 19, and then turn 20. Final corner of turn 20. It goes Hulkenberg. Where's he going to go? He went off the track. Probably isn't that good of a lap. Goes third. So to be fair, not too bad for Hulkenberg. If you wondered why I kept changing corner names, like some cars just aren't, some corners just aren't given numbers for some reason. Anyway, Lewis Hamilton currently on provisional pole in front of his teammate George Russell. Lando Norris. Let's see him. He was rather racy in. Um, Rio last weekend, of course, the sprint race, but unfortunately, it couldn't, it wasn't to be too many mistakes to the Brit, and he ended up DNFing out the sprint, uh, spectacularly out of the sprint, actually, and then, oh, is that Hulkenberg? 
That's Hulkenberg without a front wing going through the NASCAR layout very slowly, so maybe he's got some sort of issue. Currently in P3. Van der Norris currently in P17. Can he recreate what he did last weekend? But this time, not crashing out. And there's Hulkenberg, actually. Almost getting in Lando Norris's way as he comes back on the track. I don't know what he's doing, to be honest. Still a bit of a gap. This Hulkenberg... No, where's Hulkenberg gone? I don't know where Hulkenberg is. And the Norris goes through the final breaking point. Last corner that really matters. Basically, last corner doesn't really matter, to be honest. It's just that out left-hander. Of course, this circuit actually used to start on the drag seat. Landon Norris goes P2. That's a brilliant lap from the Brit. Recreating what he did last weekend, definitely. Um, yes, I was saying, this circuit actually used to start on the drag strip. Ooh, some dodgy coverage there. Yeah, it used to start on the drag strip. Can I find some... Well, let's go through what series is used. Um, Sonoma, we've got, of course, NASCAR Cup Series from 1989 all the way to 2019. And then 2021 to present. Well, I didn't go there during COVID. Uh, Maxinetti came here in 2023. Of course, we had Cole Custer. Um, we've got, sorry, we've got Cole Custer. We've got um, John Hunter Niemencheck. We've got... Um, Wait, no, that was last week, wasn't it? What am I about? Cole Custer, of course, won the Xfinity Championship last weekend, along with, um... Who was it? It was Ben Rhodes, he won his second Trucks World Championship. Um, World Championship, but... Uh, Trucks Championship. Um, in not the best fashion, I've got to admit, a bit of a messy race, but... I ain't heard of that, or Heim deserved it, in my opinion. But anyway, uh, GT World Challenge America came in 1990 to 93, didn't come in 94, but 95, 96, 2000 to 2001, 2003 to 2006, then 2011 to 2017, and 2019 to present. We've got the Trans Am Series, 1969, 78, 81, 93, 95, 2001, 03, 04, and then 2022 to present. Um, National Hot Rod Drag Racing, Sonoma Nationals, 1988-2019. Covid broke in 2020, but since 2021 they've been here. Then there's Sonoma Historic Motorsport Festival. You've got the World Touring Car Race of the United States, 2012 and 2013, of course. Um, that series doesn't even exist anymore. So you've got IndyCar, 1970, and then 2005 to 2018. IMSA came here, 1976 to 1990, 95, 97, and 99 to 2008. Then the Craft uh, Camping World Truck Series came here in 1995, 1998 and 2022. Then Moto America came here in 1977, 79, 82, 88, 93, 99, 2001, 2012 and 2017 to 2019. Then the Can-Am Series 1977 at 1980 and 1984. Um, Sonoma, this layout is I think about 3.8 kilometres long. It's the circuit that GT World Challenge America used. At one point, um, it's a bit like no, it's not like the IndyCar course. You meant to use the IndyCar course actually, but um, called the lap tight hairpin, decided against it. Um, also, 80 laps tomorrow. That's how long the race will be. It's been extended from 76 to 80 because of the um layout changes. Um, no, oh, that's not cute. Yeah, um, also, big news came out, I think, about two hours before practice, and it is that um, OFV3 um, today, and it is that the 2024 season of F1 Fantasy will be the last until 2026. It was meant to be a 27 race series, um, going from March in Sepang to December in Bathurst, originally Sydney, but now Bathurst. Um, also... 17, at least 17 race, no, maximum 17 races have been cancelled. It'll be now a 10 race season. I have the calendar up for you now. Dates are all still the same. It's just more of a gap between different races now. And, yeah, it's just because um, some issues with me being able to do this, all of this. 
Um, anyway, we start in Sepang on March 17th, then go to Autopolis in Japan on March 31st. Month break, just under a month break before we go to Seattle for the Seattle Grand Prix on April 21st. And then April, May, June, about a two month, month and a half gap between Seattle and the French Grand Prix and the Bugatti circuit on June the 9th. Then you've got the 24 hours of Le Mans, week after that, round 5 of F1 is going to be the Le Mans Grand Prix on Circuit de la Salle on June 23rd. A big break now, that's summer break over and we go to Italy for the second half of the season on September the 8th at Vallelunga. And it's the Turkish Grand Prix at Istanbul Park on the September 24th. We've got triple headers by the way. Indian Grand Prix at Bud September 29th and Korean Grand Prix at Korea International Raceway on October the 6th. We've got a week break before we go to Watkins Glen for the US Grand Prix on October 20th. And then if time does allow us to do ra um, three more races, we'll be going to Laguna Seca on over November 24th. Sebring for Sebring 305, Saturday night race on November 30th. And then the Bathurst Grand Prix to end it all on December 15th at Mount Panorama. And then all the circuits which were cancelled will be first reserved for the 2026 season. There will be no 2025 season, unfortunately. Um... But there might be some sort of SRS in 20, end of 2025. No SRS in 2024, but there will definitely be something in like October, November, December. Potentially a NASCAR truck series type thing, but you never know. Anyway, we've been watching Lando Norris for long enough. Let's go to some other people. Is it still Lewis Hamilton on pole? Yes, it is. So it's Norris who actually splits the two marks. George Ross with a 19-point gap on the championship, uh, championship lead over Lance Stroll. Actually... Um, it might be different. Yeah, I think it's different. I don't know, did Drossel actually finish? I can't even remember what happened in Brazil from this. I haven't yet added up the championship. I'll probably do that some other time. I don't know when. Um, Ocon fifth, he's doing alright. Of course, won the US Grand Prix, the first of this American quadruple header. We've got Lance Stroll in eighth, Piastri seventh. Um, how's last weekend's winner doing? La Liam Lawson in 20th. That's not good for him. Stappen in 19th. That's awful. He has not won a race this season. He's only got three more chances in China, Daytona, and um, Dubai. Same with Lando Norris. He's also got three more chances. And Filippo Drogovic. I mean, if you can see me out him as well. Teo Paul Chef, 13th. <laughs> there was an engine failure which ended his race last weekend, unfortunately. For the Frenchman, who is replacing, this is actually his final race for the foreseeable future. He replaces Valtteri Bottas, who has a broken ankle. He will be back, hopefully, for the Daytona 305. But um, Paul Chair will be also missing the Chinese Grand Prix, as he will be in Abu Dhabi for the Abu Dhabi Grand, um, Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, the F2 round, the final round of the F2 Championship, where it will be him against Frederick Vesti. For the final, um, for the championship in F2, of course, Vesti is being replaced by Andrea Kimi Antonelli next year. I'm assuming, I'm sure, Behrman will get the Premier seat. Don't see why not. Um, yeah, Porsche currently 13th. Also, this kind of went under the radar a bit, but F1 are actually limiting the amount of laps you can do now. It's, I think, going to be 10 laps. But you can do it in a 20 minute time period. It means actually Porsche has done all 10 of his laps. He'll be coming into the pits after this. Um, that's basically because we had the issue with Hulkenberg in um, Virginia. Where he set pole a lot after the session and actually finished. For some reason. I think Sargent also did a um, improved as well. Um, to find people to watch. Hulkenberg, how did he do? We saw him earlier on a bit up here isn't he? yeah here he is he's back out on track okay so Hulkenberg he's only done four laps actually I think we saw him with a front wing getting told that he went off actually at this corner no not this corner turn two he just went off and it is a tricky corner to be fair uphill very steep uphill it's like starting at a tight hero rouge it's like yeah basically a tight hero rouge it's like 24 hours of spa type of start no it's Hulkenberg Goes through the self. Oh, we're going straight on. It's actually his outlap, by the way. He's going straight on. Does a little donut. Managed to get it turned around pretty smoothly. And then. Goes through to start. Another flying lap to try and improve on his P4. 
it's less than a tenth actually in it between P4 and Lewis Hamilton and P1. So it is very tight indeed between these lot. Let's have a look at goes for the hairpin. Let's see what he does. Slowly, I'm assuming it's just to, uh, yeah, gets it spun in. Much better line if you do it slowly. Now he starts another flying lap. Does Nico Hulkenberg? Let's go on board. Not a good driver's eye, but let's go on board with the um, German course one earlier on this season in Biraram and oh, we went a bit deep there. Nas no, he spun it as well on the curb. Wanted to keep it in a straight line-ish. Off the track and now we're in this lap for the German. About to say he won the Thai Grand Prix at Biraram. Chang International Circuit a few months ago, about two months ago, about a month, month ago, I don't know, it was like October, I think, now it's November, so. Yeah, of course. Um, last lap move on Charles Leclerc, who has won twice this season so far with the Monagas, he won at, where was it, Estoril, and he also won at Assen, not Assen, sorry, um, Virginia, I have got Aston Virginia mixed up. But I think you know other people who've won a few races this season. Um, oh, look at that Hulkenberg, though. that's big, that's big for Hulkenberg. That is big. He lost it on the curb, a bit like Landon Norris did, that flat out left hander in Brazil last week. Again, during, late on during qualifying. And P4, that's going to be a difficult repair job if they want to get that out and he's... I don't think he's actually moving. That doesn't look good. The car is just... Oh, no. He's, he's maneuvering the car. That's good. At least he has the power to be able to steal the car away from the barrier. But has it got no brakes? I'm assuming that's an issue. Because he's now going back on the track. And there's a Red Bull coming. And he needs to maneuver that car away from the racing line. Which he's done actually quite well. And does end up actually going in the wall. The whole thing most qualifying is over. That is big crash let's go on board with Hulkenberg that horrible accident going through the final sector the tricky left right kinks let's just see it um, yeah it gets on the grass and then oh that loses the car let's go driver's eye see how that looks He gets on the grass and oh, this will be just tries to move the steering wheels, just try and correct the car, but he can't. I'm also pretty sure that most people actually have finished qualifying now. I know someone's out on track, just happens out on track. Okay, but he's on his he's he's in the 18th. He's done 10 laps already. So that's his qualifying over. I believe he's the only one on still on track. 18th of Verstappen is massive. He just he has been appalling this season. Not just him, the Red Bull car in general it hasn't won a race this year. I think he's had a few podiums. I need to read it all right at Urban Road America to get P4. But Perez was dropped because of poor performances. He got pulled in Miami, I think. To be fair. Um. But, I mean, yeah, he got he got one pole position this season. No, it's out of, no, not one, he had loads of pole positions, sorry. Matt Verstappen's got a few poles. But the race pace, the engine is just appalling. Because I'm assuming they chose to drop Perez because of, um, Verstappen's, of course, the two-time world champion. And Perez hasn't really done much for Red Bull apart from basically carrying Verstappen in the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix of 2021. But there's still one other person on track, actually. Who is that? Is that I think it's Sonoda. Yeah, Sonoda and P17 also end up actually come into the pits. So that looks like with a minute and a half to go, qualifying over. So no anti-climax finish. It's going to be Lewis Hamilton on pole. Has he got a pole before this season? Let's have a look. Let's get my notes up. I 
Oh, it just crashed, nice. Um, poles. Uh, no, it's his first pole position of the season. Russell, his teammate, has one, two, three, four, five. Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six pole positions his teammates got. But Stappen actually got one, two, three, four poles as well. So Red Bull have five, six actually, because Perez also got pole at Norton Park. But just no wins to prove for them. Of course, Nick De Vries got pole as well in um, Germany when he's Alpha Tauri. De Vries has also won a race. Both Alpha Tauri's have won races actually, so it's actually Alpha Tauri. Who are the better Red Bull team? But anyway, let's go through your grid. Liam Lawson, last week's winner in 20th. We've got Sainz in 19th, Verstappen 18th, Sonoda down in 17th, De Vries 16th. Shocking for both Red Bull teams. Actually, we've got Joe in 15th, Drogovic in 14th. He scored a point in every single race this season that he's done, including sprints. So, actually, every single race weekend. Um, which is wild, especially considering how he's, um, where he's been. Um, last week in Brazil, he was nowhere near it, but people kept DNFing, which is good for him. We've got Paul Chair in 13th. Um, pretty good, considering... It's only a second race in F1. They're already out qualifying like two-time world champion Max Verstappen. Uh, Gasly in 12th. He's, he'll be disappointing of that, especially it being only 20 points off the championship. We've got Albon in 11th. Sargent in 10th. Magnussen in 9th. Stroll, another championship contender in 8th. Piastri in 7th. Leclerc in 6th. Ocon 5th. Hulkenberg 4th. We've got championship leader George Russell in 3rd. Landon Norris, brilliant second. But it's Hamilton's first pole of the season to put him in the front for tomorrow's race rolling start it will be tomorrow if they do a lap around the track and then start off at the start of finish straight which you can see right here back then it's an hour early it's 10 p.m start in the uk i think what time in local time uh two o'clock i believe yeah that sounds about right so yeah we'll be back then for now I'll see you then. Goodbye.